see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Excel in the grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty he might become rich. So, becoming rich, to me one of the first steps to becoming rich, become aware of your personal poverty. Awareness of personal poverty can create an open heart to God's grace. I agree with that. And I put the word can in there. Because becoming aware of your personal poverty can also give you a hard heart. It can open yourself up to grace. That's what God's trying to do. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says when, when tough times come, when, when tough times come, it says right in Hebrews 12 that you need to think about it as discipline from God. That's the way you need to look at it. When tough times come, look at it as discipline from God because the Lord loves those whom He disciplines. It's God, it's grace that you go through hard times. To me, this is the only, this is one of the few redeeming qualities of suffering. Because to me, one of the question of suffering is one of the hardest questions. When people start telling me, you know, why did I have to suffer for this? Or why do people have to suffer? I can tell you what suffering does. It creates poverty and it opens me up call out to God. Because if everything was right, I would never call out to God. And I'd like to tell you otherwise. But it's only poverty that makes sense. Awareness of personal poverty can create an open heart to God. Yeah, I talked about on the back of the ship that one night. Experience tremendous problems by bending. Absolutely. Becoming aware of my limitations in humans. When you're poverty, you, you become aware of your limitations. And the human element. But guess what happened in the church of Macedonia? How do you become rich? Living in the grace of God creates a richness of soul and spirit. It really can. It can create a richness. Choosing to live humbly opens the heart to listen. I think that oftentimes it's very difficult when we're closed. And normally we're closed when we think we have it together. We know the answers. But poverty breaks us up. The sun that beats down on the ground where no water comes, what does the ground do? It cracks open. Because it's wanting water. Crack us open, God. Crack us open. When you know you lack, you're more open to receive. And that's the difficulty of poorness. You're in a place where you have to receive. But that's the beauty of it. Is it's in the receiving that we become rich. Grace helps me see the difference between what is best and what is good. All of a sudden, you rethink your priorities. When adversity comes, all of a sudden priorities become clear. You know, it is about relationships. It's not about the money. It is about connecting with God. It's not about we can fill in the blank. Grace helps me see the difference between what is best and what is good. Grace brought on by poverty, slows me down and helps me realize who I am. That creates richness. Knowing the riches of God creates a lifestyle of gener generosity. When you know the riches of God, you want to give it away. 
It creates generosity. That's what happened to that church in Macedonia. Knowing the gift of grace helps me freely give grace to others. Freely you've received, freely give. Knowing the riches of God enables me to see my life purpose. My purpose to serve, to love. It's not about getting anymore, it's about giving. I become richer as I become more generous. And as you start giving, you want to give more. Because you, 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 there's a freedom when you're not tied down by stuff. Not only that, if you get, as you give more, if you give more, God will give you more. Generosity is a mark of true godliness. It's a mark that God has come to you. Jesus says, "All men will know that you're my followers." By the love that you have for one another. Love is the fulfillment of the law. It's the most excellent way. And generosity. This to me ties to God. You're willing to give. With no strings attached. And that's hard. I mean, I think we don't, I think we think we don't have strength. I think most of us do. You know the grace that has come to us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed. He set aside his infinite riches and was born into the lowest circumstance so that you may gain great riches through his humble poverty. God is looking for people who will be like you. Who will reach well beyond themselves. Who will give out of their poverty beyond their own ability. For some years ago, when we were meeting at the Prentke Roman, there was an individual within the congregation whose income at the tops. I would say at the tops, your income may have been $30,000. They gave $20,000 a year. They lived off of 10. And they were happy. They had a whole other understanding. They were rich in so many other ways. What's my father? What was to be like this Macedonian church? That under severe trial, the joy would come up. And that we would be generous. And that the, whatever the trials that, that we encounter, Lord, that this would bring us to a place of wanting you. This would bring us to a place of grace, where we see the need for grace. And we would seek you. I'm reminded of the church of Laodicea, who you said was poor, and pitiful and blind and naked, but they said that they were rich and lacked nothing. Lord, help us to see life. Help us become aware of our poverty in that this is a gift of God. Thank you, Lord, that you chose to come to this world out of love's sake. You chose poverty so that you could show us the one true life. Thank you, Lord. 
especially this time of Christmas. It's all about a lot of a lot of our tradition here in the United States is about stuff and giving and buying. Help us not to miss. Really your spirit. The spirit of generosity, your spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord. You're an awesome God. Stir us. So um, every Monday morning at work, we have a Monday morning meeting, which used to last like five, ten minutes with our old manager. And um, our new manager is very different than our old manager is what we've, we're, we're realizing. And so at our Monday morning meeting, we're all like gathered around and he's like, you know, good morning. And so he goes over like the sales figures for the past week in each department, which this is new as well, so we're like, oh, okay. And uh, then he's like, you know, he's like, there's something that I want to start doing at every Monday meeting that we have, and that was, and so we're like, okay. And he's like, I want to go ahead and read the devotional that the company sends us every week. And I looked at my one coworker and I said, we get a devotional every week? <laughs> She's like, Megan, it's on the backboard. I was like, like I'm going to look at the backboard. But, um, and they're like, yeah, we always get them. And I was like, I had no, I had no idea that we ever got devotionals. And I was like, oh, okay. So my manager's name is Nathan. So Nathan goes ahead and he reads through this devotional. And the title of it was, I Found Jesus. And I was like, oh, this is great. I can see the looks on my coworkers' faces. And they are so, so not happy in this <laughs> moment that we have to do this. And so, like, the story in the devotional was the fact that we have... Um, a large nativity set that Hobby Lobby sell, sells at Christmas time. And so there's a baby Jesus in the manger, right? And he weighs like 25 pounds. Okay. It's like, it's a big kid, right? And so somebody, I don't know if it was a customer or, customer or a worker, took baby Jesus and hid him in the store somewhere. Okay. And so there was this devotion was about this manager who found him hidden behind some boxes or something. And he took a picture and he's like, I found Jesus. And so Nathan, like Nathan reads this devotional, and I'm like, okay. And then at the end of it, he's like, um, he's like, I wanted to talk about this. He's like, because I need to get this out in the open to all of you. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And so he's like, I always carry like my favorite track around with me in my pocket. He's like, that way, if any, like if I come across anyone who needs to talk about Jesus, like I'm gonna do it right here, like on the spot. And I am just standing there thinking, my old manager never would have done this. <laughs> like, never would have done this. And so then he goes into his own, like, personal story. And he's like, three years ago in October, he's like, I found Jesus. He's like, I always went to church. He was like, I went to church when I was a kid. I've always done it. He's like, we went there for an hour. We went home. That was it. You know, and he's like, but three years ago, Jesus became very real to me. And I'm just standing there, like people, like customers are shopping, people are buying things, and I'm thinking, whoa, like what is happening right now? And so he goes on and he's like, you know, I went through the darkest time um, that I've ever experienced in my life. He's like, my sister committed suicide. And he's like, there is nothing that will rattle you more than somebody you love committing suicide. He's like, it changed me forever. He's like, my job was going downhill. He's like, everything was terrible. He's like, and then one Sunday, the pastor said something, and it changed my life. And he's like, I finally got it. So like I got that Jesus was supposed to be a part of me and not just something I attended. And he is like, he has tears in his eyes, his voice is cracking, and I'm standing there 
looking at my coworkers, and they, like, all of their heads are down, like, they can't even look him in the eye. And I'm like, what, whoa, <laughs> like, what is going on? And so, like, he then ends with, you know, if you guys ever need to pray about anything or want to talk about this, he's like, come see me. It's like, it doesn't matter what time it is. He's like, we'll pray about it, we'll talk about it, you know, whatever. He's like, if you, he's like, if you have a really hard, you know, prayer request, he's like, I'll even take it to my Bible study. And it's like, I'm like cracking up in the corner because I'm like, what just happened? And so then he ends the meeting and like everyone just like quickly leaves, like quickly exits from away from this meeting. And I'm the only one standing there and Nathan comes up to me, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, I was like, I so needed that. Like, I don't even know why I needed it, but I think I needed to see someone willing to talk about this to other people. And a Christian, I mean, Hobby Lobby is a Christian store, and a Christian store that, you know, my old manager said he wanted to be a pastor, and that was his calling. I was like, he never would have done this. And I was like, Nathan, I think we needed you more than we realized. I was like, I don't know about the rest of them, but I really appreciate this. Like. I didn't even know we had devotions, like, I had no idea. <laughs> and he's like, oh, and he's like, well, thank you, Megan. But it was like, in that moment, I realized, I was like, wow. Like, this is, this is the evidence of a changed life. And it was just refreshing to see that. It's like, at, especially at work, because, you know, you have stress and struggles and everyone's complaining. It was like, in this moment, in this crazy, hectic moment on Monday morning at the cash registers, like, he's telling us his life story, and you can see the fact that he's different. And it was just like, wow. It's like, that's Christmas for me. Like, that's it. I was like, I'm so happy right now. It's like the best week. I was like, I love Nathan. Like, this is great. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you this morning, because, I mean, what he was saying wasn't anything I hadn't heard before. But the fact that he stopped in, like, the middle of the day to share... I was like, I needed that. I needed to see that. And so, um, some of my coworkers, because they know they know that Megan's a Christian, so they always try and talk talk nice around me, which they don't. They don't. I don't understand what their definition definition of talk nice is, but <laughs> they swear just as much around me as they do each other. So, anyways, <laughs> but like they've been coming up at different points this week, and they're like, Hey, hey, I got a question. Like. And so they're asking me about different things that they don't understand, like in the Bible, where they don't understand why we do certain things. And so I'm talking to them, you know, like explaining things or whatever, and they're like, oh, okay, okay. And I'm like, you could go talk to Nathan. He did offer that. And they're like, no, no, no. I like you better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll pray for you too, but you have another option besides, no, no, no. We'll pray with you. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. On your testimony, I just want to take this moment and say thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. At Holly Lawkins. I know. Thank you, Lord. I know. It's so good. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. It is. But yeah, so it was. And then the week was like kind of the same. But it was like, this is, I don't know. Especially like the people I saw at this meeting. Like I was looking at this, because every Monday morning, different people open. And I was just looking at the people that were there. I'm pretty sure I was the only Christian that was there, and then the rest of, like, and then was the other ones that aren't saved in the store. And I was like, huh, oh, this is very interesting. But, but yeah, so I mean, I guess I'm just encouraging you to, That's right. to speak when you need to speak. Because you never know who it's going to reach. So, so yeah. Um, announcements?